We're here talking about Guacamelee 2, and uh, the first game was unbelievable. I love it so much. Uh, it reminds me a lot of retro action platforming Metroidvania style games. The controls are all really tight and everything. Um, what's different in 2? Oh wow, I don't know where to start. Uh, <laughs> Uh, basically, we took everything from the first game uh, and tried to bring it up a level. And then on top of that, we tried to add a whole host of new things. So uh, just to give a rattle off a couple of examples, um, uh, you'll still gain a lot of the same abilities that you did in the original game. Uh, you'll start with no abilities, but as you progress through, you'll get like the rooster uppercut and the dash punch. Uh, but you also get additional types of abilities, like uh, we have a new uh, hooking mechanic, so it's, we call it Eagle Boost. So You'll see little spots in the world where you can, um, when you get close to them, you can push the triangle button on the PlayStation controller to, to shoot through them. And we use that to allow the player to traverse through the levels more quickly or create platforming challenges around them. Um, the chicken in the original game, we had very basic moveset. Uh, but in Guacamelee 2, we're really fleshing that out a lot further. The chicken is, uh, is, is as effective as uh, Juan uh, is in, com in co both combat and platforming. Uh, and it has its own unique abilities. For example, uh, like you can you can fight as a chicken, you can throw as a chicken. It gets abilities to do like a dash attack in diagonal directions. Um, you can wall jump. You if you hold down X, you can glide as the chicken. A lot of those things are unlocked similarly to a Metroidvania structure as you progress through the game. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, there's like a whole bunch of new enemies, a whole bunch of new bosses, uh, all new levels and uh, a new upgrade system. Um, that's a lot of the new things, and uh, there's a couple more that are not coming to me right away, but yeah, yeah. there's a lot of new stuff. So uh, there's some very clear influences in the game with, uh, we pointed out, the chicken statues in place of the Metroid statues. What other uh, sources do you pull from for creating this? Um, a lot of the people in the studio are, are older gamers, so uh, we grew up playing like a lot of the classics you mentioned, like, uh, like Metroid, Castlevania, uh, old Mario games. Um, so we're you know we're constantly trying to draw references from those things, things that we put in the game that uh, that people who play those old games will look at and be like, oh yeah, I remember that. It's like, like slight nods to those kind of things. But also trying to um, try and introduce new kinds of mechanics or new type, new kinds of like environmental mechanics or player mechanics that are, are make things feel fresh. So one of the things in the demo that uh, that we're showing here is uh, the original the original Guacamelee had its dimension swapping mechanic with the living in a dead world, and you could pull it, you could pull one of the triggers to swap between them. Um, in, the, in Guacamelee 2, we also have these things called dimension waves, which are like moving windows um, that show you a, like a portal into the dead world. So um, in the original game, there might be a platform that was only in one of the dimensions, and as you're jumping, you need to swap dimensions to make the platform appear, appear and land on it. Uh, in Guacamelee 2, we do things like having the dimension waves passing through the platform, so you need to like time your jumps to make sure that the platform is there as the dimension wave is passing through it. Uh, so something like that's more like of a, uh, like I would say like a, more current day kind of mechanic, um, and just like trying to trying to riff and experiment on different ideas uh, and push things further that we that we had in Guacamelee One. Yeah. Did the uh, desire to do a sequel come from the success of the first, or a desire for you guys to add some new things and do some new things? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, at the at the end of Guacamelee One, uh, when we were starting to get close to the end of development, we had to cut a bunch of things. So we always had this backlog of, of ideas and, uh, and characters and enemies that we just didn't have time to put into the original game. Um, so uh, that was always like nagging at us, like we were sad that that stuff didn't get into the game. And then um, once we launched Guacamelee and it, it was successful, we got a lot of people asking us, hey, Guacamelee 2, Guacamelee 2. And we, then we were working on Severed and we were always hearing like people wanted to, a sequel to the game. Um, and as we were developing Severed, we were always in the back of our minds. There was always like the little wheels turning, like ideas for Guacamelee 2 that we could put in. So after wrapping up Severed, we we thought it felt like natural to go back to Guacamelee. We kind of needed a break. We worked on the original Guacamelee for like three years, and we wanted to do something completely different for a while. So so we we got our break, and now we're coming back and like you know experimenting with the new ideas. Cool. Well, I love the way that it looks. I'm super excited for it to come out. When can we expect, or where can people go to get more information on the sequel? Uh, so we don't know exactly when it's going to launch yet, but the game is uh, playable from end to end, so it's getting pretty close. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. We're doing a lot of polish. We're doing a lot of playtesting. Um, we're trying to get the game out by this summer, and it's, right now it looks like that's going to be feasible. So cr fingers crossed, uh, we're targeting this summer. Cool. And if people want more information on the game? Uh, you can follow Drinkbox Studios on Twitter or on Facebook, uh, or you can go to our website, drinkboxstudios.com. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.